Hi everyone, uh, I am Chavi and uh, welcome you all to our uh, Tech Grid uh, podcast series and today we have uh, Shamas with us. It's my pleasure to have you sir today in our Tech Podcast series. He is an uh, infrastructure master at Net Company and also he's a Microsoft MVP in uh, enterprise and mobility. So I welcome you sir today. Thank you for having me, no, I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. <laughs> That's amazing. I'd love to know about your uh, Microsoft MVP journey and uh, how you get started with it. Uh, so that's a good question. Um, so I suppose my my, my journey is just, it sort of came as, as my passion grew, I suppose, for content creation. So um, my, my sort of first, uh, I started writing blogs initially and it was, it was mainly down to, um, I wanted to share my experiences. So I wanted to do like a, a diary, if you will. So I just started writing blogs to kind of, almost document the experiences I was having in my projects with, with problems I was having with, with within my work as in technical problems and how I was fixing them. So that was back in sort of 2017 that I started started blogging. It wasn't very, you know, it wasn't a lot of blogs. It was maybe once every few months. And then the first opportunity that I actually got to do a video was um, it's something uh, that it's the, you might have seen it, it's the festive calendar. It runs every year. Um, it's the two existing MVPs, Greg Ossuti and Richard Hooper, run it. And it's basically a community initiative, and, and people create a sort of a, kind of do a video or a blog on a certain tech topic. So I decided to do a video on MFA. The first time I've done any video, you probably see it on their YouTube channel. Actually, it's it's, it's very cringe. It's so cringe. I look back at it. Um, but again, that was my first experience of video content. It put me off video content for a while, but it gave me a sort of thirst for wanting to do more community stuff. So I started presenting, got back into blogging more regularly, like once a week I was releasing a blog on different topics. And these are all topics that I was passionate about. And that was the key for me. I had to be, I feel like if I'm going to create content, if I'm going to do these blogs or videos, I have to be passionate about the topic. And eventually, again, I got back into video content. I got back into uh, YouTube. And I, I never, I never did it with aiming to get the MVP. Uh, again, what happened was, as my network grew, I, I got to I was following more MVPs. They were following me, and I was meeting them at the user group and, and events. And I just, I was nominated. So again, uh, an existing M- MVP called Gregor Sutti nominated me, and the rest is history. I, I, I was, I was, I was lucky enough that, that Microsoft agreed with him that I'd make a good MVP, and. Um, yeah, I was awarded uh, back in 2020. So this is my second year as an MVP now. That's actually amazing to hear that uh, about your journey. It's actually very inspiring for me at the same time. So uh, you shared about uh, like you are uh, also into the content creation. So would love to know like um, uh, it's very rare to see uh, people uh, who are very much into tech uh, working on the content creation as well because it's so hectic at the same time. Mm. So how you manage your time and um, like how it feels to uh, like make content and when uh, students or the professionals come to come to you and say that yeah because of your content we learned this sort of stuff so yeah. what's that feeling and uh, like how you cope up with the time so um, everybody has hobbies so some people play sports some people go to the gym some people do gaming content creation is my hobby and that's what gives me that time I because I, I treat it as a hobby and I enjoy doing it, I make time for my hobby. Like I said, everyone needs something away from their day-to-day life, you know, family work. Although it's related to my work, I still treat my my content creation as my hobby. It's separate from Net Company. I have my own brand, I am IT Geek. So I I focus on, on, on doing it as a hobby and that way I'm gonna keep on enjoying it. I, I don't, I can't do things I don't enjoy I, I can't do them well, so I, I won't do them. <laughs> um, so if I if you stop seeing any content from me, it's because I've stopped enjoying it. Um, the time is is, a, is is hard to balance. I'll be honest; it's it's difficult because it is time consuming. You're, you you know this 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 conversation we're having is is you creating content, so you know once this is done, there'll be an editing process, there'll be uh, you know sort of an auditing process. Make sure you're happy with everything, the sound quality, the video quality. It's difficult and it's time consuming. So I, I again balance it by making sure once I'm doing my work, my day to day job, I'll step away from my computer. So I'll go spend my time with my family. I've got young kids, you know, go do whatever. I might go to the gym. 
And then in the evening when my kids are asleep, I start doing so from 9 p.m. roughly to about 12 midnight, 1 a.m. sometimes. I spend that time is, is my sort of time. Not every day, not every day. Again, I've got to balance it with, you know, uh, my, we'll go out with my wife or, you know, other family things. But that's my content creation time between 9 p.m. and, and midnight to one. I, you know, I don't, I, I sleep late anyway. So it's a difficult balance. So you're right, very difficult to balance. Exactly. Like, um, that's why, um, like, uh, that's why most of the MVPs and um, like people who are working in corporate don't actually create content because it's hectic. But yeah, when when if, when it's your hobby, nothing is uh, difficult. It seems exactly. easier ultimately. It is again. It, it it was. I found it difficult at first. Like I said, the first the first video I created, it really put me off. The, it really put me off video content because I found it so hard. There are a lot of reasons for that, though. I. I I wasn't very natural in front of the camera. I needed more practice. That comes with time. I didn't have the right equipment either. I was, uh, I didn't have, like you can see my mic. I've got a really good camera now. I've got a space. There's a lot of things that you need to be comfortable with the area that you're, you're doing your content in as well. So that was a big factor. Once I got the equipment, that made it much easier and more streamlined. Again, editing software, I never had any of that. I was, you know, it was very difficult for me to do that at the start. So I, I invested some time and some 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 money into making sure my area was comfortable, um, but again, it comes with time and, and again practice really. And, and it wasn't my hobby to start with, and then once I got comfortable, that's when I you know I'm really enjoying it. It's going to be my hobby now. So I spent that time and effort into that rather than playing computer games or you know that sort of thing. Yeah, that's um, I, I can I, I can relate with that as well because uh, when uh, something is your hobby like you, you you know how to cope up with that and you know how to manage it wisely and ultimately starting stuff is very much difficult like when you actually go for that first step it's difficult to get started with that also uh, like um uh, you are also an uh, mct right so Correct. like how you like uh, what strike you in your mind to uh, like get started with the training part and how it feels to train uh, people and the professional basically the professional students when it comes to uh, Azure. So again, the the, the reason I, I became an MCT was because um, it, that was more related to my my work. So with Net Company, we we had a requirement where we wanted to start. Um, start do, teaching um, our younger consultants and, and entry-level consultants um, and and I'd spoken to a couple of MCTs and, and I thought it'd be a good way to to facilitate that so that's really how it started and and what we you know again within within my, my work I, I get to not only teach internal people but we, we do we do a lot of social activities with um, various um, charities and we we, we actually um, you know for f fully free of charge we, we do training sessions for, for sort of um, communities like uh, there's one called Tech Vets, which is for veterans um, within the within the army who are, who are coming out of the army. So we do we do free free sort of training days for them, and that's all facilitated by the MCT. Um, so yeah, it's 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 nice. It's very nice. It's again because you have access to all the latest sort of um, you know um, courseware, and and you can get access to labs to practice and stuff like that. So it does does have its massive benefits um, to, to that to, to, to teach people and it's I suppose it, it comes from my my content creation you mentioned uh, earlier that you know having people comment on my blog or videos it all really helped me and that's the feedback you, you get when you know you do a course to give you feedback or you're really helpful and inevitably people passing the exam that after a course that you've taught taught that is the cap there's no bigger sort of um, achievement than, than that seeing somebody pass an exam because you know you, you taught them the, the course the courseware um, that that that's very satisfying I've got to say exactly like uh, when you uh, like see that yeah the person is getting that particular certification because of you because of your teachings that feeling is immense I, I agree on that it, it, it is obviously it comes down they've got a lot of hard work to do as well it's not all you know me as a teacher exactly. I can only do a certain amount. Um, but it's part of being part of their achievement and, and you know being being helping them in that that is yeah that's very that's nice to do exactly exactly that's that's true so uh, uh, coming uh, back to your um, MVP domain so uh, like uh, 
I I would love to know more about your uh, domain in which um, you actually uh, are MVP. Like uh, like way like uh, usually I see MVPs in AI or data domain. So uh, like um, like what actually strike like why not AI like why this domain? So it's all to do with when 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 you're doing your sort of. Um... When you get nominated, you have to do an application and, and a form, and you have to fill out your activities. The activities that I did just fell under this category. So if you, if you look at a lot of my content, it's a lot around identity, Azure Virtual Desktop Endpoint um, Endpoint um, Manager. It's a lot around the all those all those activities fall under the enterprise mobility category. So it's just it's just how it fell when I when every time I would enter an activity. It would it would come under that category, you know. I a lot none of my content is AI or machine learning or even you know um, you know office apps. That's not that's not the stuff. That's not and essentially it's all it's all down to my contributions in the community. So my blogs, my videos, my presentations, and just the subject matter that I'm my is my speciality is covered within that that um, category. So that that's kind of why it, it fell under enterprise mobility. That's actually uh, great uh, to hear that like um, uh, most of the uh, like uh, as I mentioned before about the categories uh, it's uh, it's actually great and um, also uh, apart from that uh, would, uh, would would love to know one thing from you so mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference you have seen in the uh, like um, is your technology before pandemic and after pandemic so would would love to know that experience reason being because um uh, you 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 actually made mvp uh, in uh, 20 uh, like uh, 2020 so yeah. it was around the pandemic uh, yeah. range so okay, okay so you 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 have experienced that particular thing that how it actually changed the whole scenario the technology uh, stuff so would love to hear from you about that as well no, no, it's, a, it's a really good question um, and it, so so my my, my sort of um, contributions to the community came within the pandemic. That's correct. That's in a way the pandemic facilitated because I was working from home. I was, you know, I was I had a lot more time on my hands. Couldn't go out. You couldn't, you know, we were we were essentially all bound to our houses for nearly a year. So I spent a lot of time creating content. So that that enabled me to get my MVP. To answer your question, um, if you look at before the pandemic, um, in the United Kingdom anyway, remote working wasn't as uh, wasn't as, as well was, not a lot of companies are doing remote working or hybrid working um, than they are now and it was it was we were forced to overnight and in a lot of in a lot of cases a lot of well, in my experience so again during the pandemic I, I, I ended up working with a lot of institutions within healthcare within the UK because nobody none of these big organizations were ready to facilitate people working from home okay they had they had on-premises in servers, uh, virtual, but they were all kind of hosted within their own server rooms in their own offices. Um, you know, they they you know they, they had like hybrid identity. So a lot of companies were kind of ha started their journey into the cloud with Office 365, Exchange Online, but nothing else. Um, and they were starting that. What, what what COVID did was accelerate technology. So if you look at if you look at some of the sort of um, the services and features that we use now, the amount of development they've had since COVID hit is amazing. If you look at Teams, if you look at um, SharePoint Online, if you look at Endpoint Manager, if you look at Azure AD, look at Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 came out during the pandemic. What the pandemic did was accelerate that, te accelerate technology in my opinion especially cloud technology because overnight a lot of a lot of organizations were forced to initiate remote working so the amount of avd deployments that i did in the first six months was crazy um honestly it was so many companies because they, they didn't have they didn't have vpn they didn't have anything like that people couldn't work from home and access their network and infra, you know data so um i would say it's accelerated technology a hell of a lot you know we're coming to the back end well Depending on who who you, who you what your thoughts are, you know life is kind of going back to what it was. Traveling, you know, we're seeing in-person events. Ignite was announced as a, as an as an in-person event the other day, so people are starting to go back to some form of normality, and 
the interesting bit now will be where does technology go now because we've had that two-year period where you know the tech in my opinion the cloud technology grew within two years it grew it did like probably a 10-year journey within two years because it just had to it's interesting to know to see what will it do now will it slow down or will it come you know continue on that trajectory that time will tell i suppose yeah i i i agree on that and also i uh, saw one thing on your um uh, youtube uh, journey that you came up with the idea of book review so right now uh, like everyone is focusing on videos and they are just going for the video lectures and everything how like that came up to you like yeah i'm going for the book review or for the microsoft azure certification stuff yeah so so i've 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 published two books myself so this is how it all started oh, i yeah last year i published <laughs> i published two books one was on the azure virtual desktop az140 exam um with a press and the second one was with pact publishing and that was for the sc400 and that was a co-authorship with a friend of mine called victor victor hedberg he's another uh, mvp so when i when i created when i did the books i've you know i did the books and what happens is people are asked to do uh, or people will review them on amazon or whichever platform they're being sold on which is great written reviews are great people read i you know if you're ever buying anything online you always look at reviews you know that's the one thing you always look at read what other people's experiences what i wasn't seeing was anybody doing video reviews it's all well and good reading something but hearing somebody who has you know who's spent the time i can't do a review unless i've read the book um so i'm 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 having to spend a lot of time you know reading the the sort of uh but i don't don't get me wrong i don't read them word for word but i spend a good week looking at the book and getting the ins and outs of it um and trying to understand you know the format it's written in so the reason i started doing them no one else was doing them i, I like doing content nobody else is doing i don't like i try not to repeat what other people do Yes, we all have our own take on technology, so it's good to hear other people's opinions on on something they've done. Um, but the book reviews was because I didn't see anybody else doing it. I thought it'd be fun to do, and that's that's what it comes down to. I'm, I'm having fun, really. There's no, there's literally zero benefit to me doing those book reviews. I'm not associated with Pact in any way. I'm just just enjoying doing them, and it's it's a way to promote other people, and, and that's what community is also about. And you know, you, we should be promoting people who are doing. Writing books is hard work. Okay, I've got first hand experience that, so I appreciate what they've done. And I think, you know, trying to promote people who've written these books is 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 part and parcel of community. So that's it really. Fun and promote people. It's really great to hear that and um uh like a uh, like hearing your journey and uh, uh like your thought process about book review is totally marvelous for me so uh i would say so uh, thank you so much for uh, joining in today and uh, recording this uh, amazing podcast with me and it's uh, uh and uh, especially it's it's an amazing experience for me as well to hear your journey and everything so uh, thank you so much everyone uh, and, uh, we would uh, sure be coming with an amazing great tech podcast again soon thank you so much